After a 12-hour layover at Moscow's Sheremetyevo Airport, I'm continuing on with my journey across Europe. This time, I'm flying to the Netherlands via KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. But things aren't easy if you're airport hopping in Europe without visas. Stick around and find out how we pulled this off and where this all ended up taking me. Only here, where else? My journey begins one frosty morning in Russia, at Moscow Sheremetyevo Airport, with traces of frost covering planes parked at the ramp. At 4 a.m. in the morning, I check out my flight, excited to continue my journey across Europe in this Moscow to Amsterdam leg. Thrilled to see the aircraft we're taking, all the more I got excited as it's gonna be my first time to be setting foot in the Netherlands. But having only onward tickets and no visas, I was asked to step aside by a puzzled gate agent to thoroughly examine my strange route of going back home to the Philippines that started from Hong Kong with lots of stops in Europe. As usual, they're checking uh, my ticket and, uh, because it's a thing, the uh, visa, but I'm staying here side. So, just for security, they have to. First line up at the gate and the last to board. Finally, I was allowed to continue with my flight since my trip around Europe only involves staying airside. But honestly, it scared me enough as things might not work how I planned it to be. But doing my research on which airport will allow me to go on long layovers, I somewhat knew I can pull this off. And so finally, I make my way to the gate, with the term glad being an understatement. Being in Moscow Sheremetyevo for a 10-hour layover sure was an experience that I really feel bad leaving this place. Well, I gotta continue on my way with one door closing and another one opening. And it's good to see it's the plane store of a KLM Royal Dutch aircraft. This is my first time to fly with KLM, which I've been dreaming to try for years now. Finally, it's a wish come true for me to experience what it's like to try this airline. And with it, I began checking out the amenities starting with what I have in my seat pocket. There I find their in-flight magazine. A bit worn out, but will sure keep me entertained somehow. And it also comes with a pre-chewed gum. Next, I find an air sickness bag, which hopefully I won't use in this three-hour flight to Amsterdam. Other than that, there's nothing more that I tried enjoying my view outside the plane's window. Too bad I wasn't able to secure a window seat to capture the remaining scenery I have of Sheremetyevo Airport. And being stuck in the middle seat, well, I just have to find ways to enjoy my stay here, appreciating the legroom I have aboard this 737 aircraft. Soon our plane is pushed back, but an announcement was made that we have to stop for a bit as our plane is covered with ice. And coming from a tropical country where we don't have this procedure, it's something that I just have to see. We are pushed to a de-icing platform. Uh, we are going to de-ice this aircraft because we have light snow on the wings and we are not allowed to depart with this snow. After the de-icing, we will start the engines and then we taxi out to the departure runway. Today we have a flight time of 3 hours and 5 minutes and during this flight we will come back to you with some more flight details and the actual arrival time for Amsterdam and for now I wish you a really pleasant flight. For someone like me who hails from Southeast Asia where it doesn't snow, it happens to be an interesting sight to look at. It's like our aircraft needing to take a quick shower before taking its flight. But yeah, it's one of those safety procedures so our wings can produce lift. Not the usual sight I get in the Philippines. Anyhow, once done, we were finally moving with our plane taking off for Amsterdam. Too bad there's nothing much to see while taking off very early in today's flight. Stuck in the middle seat, I can only enjoy the view of what's happening inside the cabin for now. So, to entertain myself, I go through my seat pocket again, opening my tray table and taking the only reading material available, KLM's in-flight magazine, Holland Herald. And no, I don't mind how worn out the magazine is. What bothers me is the gum that's stuck to it that's holding the pages. Unlike in my previous flight with Aeroflot, with their in-flight magazines mostly in Russian, there's nothing to worry about scanning through this as it's entirely printed in English. Anyhow, what greatly interests me about these in-flight magazines are the last pages that show this airline's routes and destinations, as well as its fleet of different aircraft this airline utilizes. And not too long, snacks are eventually served. Breakfast comes in the form of cheese croissant and orange juice. 
Although I'm used to flying Asian carriers serving heavy meals on flights lasting three hours or longer, I'm still grateful that there's something to fill my tummy. After about two hours into the flight, I'm surprised we were given another round of light snacks, which I appreciate as I only expected we'd be given these blessings one time. Shortly, crew members are seen along the aisle preparing passengers, and before we knew it, we were touching down at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. Boy, do I love the sound of our crew's accent. Adding more to the wonder of it all is the fact that I finally arrived in the Netherlands when it used to be a long time dream of setting foot in this place. And being one of the last to disembark, a surprise came along. I was treated to KLM's warm and very welcoming hospitality by its crew members. We just arrived, touched down in Amsterdam. So we are here with Mitch Young. <laughs> Lee. I'm here actually. Oh, the first time it's in Amsterdam. I'm not filming the oh, crew, but the there you are. Oh, yes, right, you leaving the airplane. <laughs> Hola. Hi, she speaks Spanish. Yes, well. well. <laughs> yeah. Welcome in Amsterdam. Yeah, it's my first time. But you have a transfer flight, sir. Yes, I'm going to London. Then oh, all the way to Manila. So from Manila. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, you gotta go. So that you have to go with the bus, and then you can go downstairs um, all right. and have a enjoy enjoy your flights to Manila and Thank to you. London. Have you been to Manila? Not yet. I've not been to Manila, no. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll That's see you there. Safe flight. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so it looks like we're going to take the bus. Ooh, smells like jet fuel. But anyway, it's raining and uh, and we're taking the shuttle going to the terminal. It's raining, it's already 7 minutes to start. Yep, it's raining when I got to the ramp. And according to some passengers I'm with, this is normal weather here. And so off we go on board a shuttle bus that will take us to the terminal. And when we finally got there, I swear, I just wanted to kiss the ground. Call me shallow or what, but I sure appreciate life's little blessings, especially given the opportunity to visit this gateway to the world. So whatever happened a while ago, we didn't get a good landing. And uh, yeah, at least here, babawi tayo kasi uh, marami tayong plane sa labas. From the terminal, I'm welcomed with a view of so many KLM aircraft all lined up. Schiphol sure is a nice airport to do plane spotting, but then I gotta move along. After passing through security checks, I find myself in one of the terminals with lots of shops on sale. Now let me get a souvenir. Okay, now there's just sale here in the airport. Sale, Black Friday sale. Now this we gotta check out. Black Friday sale, Black Friday sale. We, we have um, oh, 29 euros for that big you know. One of my agenda in stopping by Schiphol Airport is to get me some model planes. And for 19 euros each, I just gotta grab some of these items, which I can hardly find anywhere else. And with a Black Friday sale, these model planes are surely a steal. Amsterdam Schiphol is a very big airport. And before I start exploring around, I just gotta check with my connecting flight to London before I get carried away from all the stuff I wanted to do while I'm here. 
Good thing these kiosks are conveniently everywhere, and with a few touches on the screen, I'm also able to locate my gate so I can plan where to go and what to do next. And one of them happens to do more plane spotting as I walk from one concourse to another. Amsterdam Schiphol is one of the biggest and busiest airports in the world, so it's no surprise to see lots of aircraft parked at the gate. I heard there's also a museum and art gallery somewhere, along with spas, casinos, even a library. Unfortunately, I never got to visit them as I got so distracted by stuff that makes what the Netherlands is known for. There's just tulips everywhere, and most of all, a variety of cheese that travelers like me are free to try and taste. It's known for good cheese, so we just gotta try this. Yeah. And oh, see yeah, how it tastes like. I'm sure it's pretty good. Hmm. Don't let this huge airport scare you. Despite its size, it's easy to navigate your way around Skipal. Alright, so I've just been uh, going around Skipal Airport. It's a, it's a pretty big airport. Reminds me of Changi, but. Uh, much more crowded than Changi Airport. And uh, although they have um, good facilities here, they got charging stations. I think this is a Singapore Changi of uh, Europe. Pretty nice. Yeah. And what's more is that uh, you got you get to see planes from the outside. I mean, from the window. So let's go there. Well, it seems it's gonna take me hours just to visit all corners of this airport. It's a huge place with lots of big windows to give plane spotters the best view of planes at the ramp. I guarantee there's so much to do here than just spotting planes. But let me remind you that you need to come here way ahead of time if you're catching a flight, as you might need to walk quite a distance to get to your assigned gate. It's better to reach the boarding area with enough time to spare than getting the feeling of being rushed, or worse, missing your flight. Speaking of spare time, I explore the airport further, watching fellow travelers go by and enjoying the variety of merchandise and souvenir items sold at the shops here. But one thing I really enjoyed in this airport is the overflowing supply of cheese that's found in almost every corridor that's free to try. Which reminds me that I didn't have enough for breakfast and I gotta find a good spot to have a good meal and eventually settle down. I find myself in one of this airport's food court. There are lots of places to dine, but are mostly packed with people. And finding this quiet spot with a fascinating view of planes simply drew me to this place. Oh well, I'm tired and I'm hungry, so McDonald's for breakfast? Well, why not? This is just the first round, and I'm having dessert somewhere after this. What matters for now is I eat in peace with a great view of an Airbus 330 in front of me. For airline travel and airports, this is Mitch Young. Thank you very much for watching. So we're here now in uh, Amsterdam and we're having breakfast and later on we'll proceed to London where I'll be having my dinner and then fly back to Manila. So I'll learn later to choose the restroom. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah I got this by the way here in Amsterdam, it's a souvenir. And uh, triple seven. Good. So guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next vlog.